Hey there, welcome to the tutorial on managing client projects and keeping your finances in check using an Excel template. Whether you're a freelancer, consultant or managing a team, this tool is here to make your life easier. Today, we are going to dive into automating tasks using VBA and creating a dashboard to give you a clear visual summary of your data. Stick around to the end to see how this can totally transform your workflow. Ho! Oh, and guess what? In my next video, I will be breaking down some key Power BI DAX formulas. Trust me, it's going to be super helpful. So, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss out. Alright, let's jump right into today's tutorial. Alright, let's start by opening a new Excel workbook. Now, look at the first row. We are going to type out what each column represents. In the first cell, type employee name. In the next one, type date, then client, followed by project, and finally hours worked. These are her headers like labels that tell us what we'll put under each one. Think of them as the signposts that organize our data trail. I would name this sheet employee tracking. Moving on, we are going to create our own reference library for our data entries. Let's add a new sheet. Just click on the plus sign at the bottom. Name this new sheet list by double clicking on the sheet tab. Now, in this new sheet, in column A, let's put down a list of all our employee names, each name with its own cell going downwards. In column B next to it, list down all the clients. And in column C, let's jot down the different projects. Label the top of each column with employee names, clients, and projects so we know what each list is for. So this is our cheat sheet that we will use to make sure everything we enter later is spelled correctly and matches up. With our list ready, let's make it super easy to use them. So click on the first name in your employee names list and drag it down to the last name to highlight them all. Now go up to the formulas tab at the top, click on the find name this is like giving a nickname to your group of friends so you can call them all at once. Let's name this group employee list. We will do the same for our clients and project columns, naming them client list and project list. These nicknames or named ranges are shortcuts we will use just in a bit. Let's go back to our original sheet, the employee tracking sheet, where we will be entering our data. Click on the second cell under employee name because the first one is our header. Remember that we had only the right stuff goes into our cells. Click on data validation from this drop down here and a new window pops up. Under where it says allow, pick list from the drop down menu. Now in the source box that shows up, type in equals employee list. This is telling Excel, hey, only let names from my employee list go in here. Press OK and like magic, if you click on that cell, you will get a drop down arrow that lets you pick from the employee names we listed earlier. You can drag this all the way down to cover all the areas you're going to have data imputed. Now, let's make sure that only legitimate dates are entered into our date column. So select the column under the date header, click on the data tab, and then data validation. In the settings area, choose dates from the allow drop-down menu. You can decide to define a date range like this fiscal year or the duration of the project. I am going to make this 2023. By doing this, Excel becomes a quality control, ensuring no impossible dates 
like February 38th or well April 45th sneak into our records. Let's move on to our client and project columns. We are doing the same dance. So select the cells where the client names will go and click on data validation under the data tab. Pick list from the drop down menu, but this time in the source, you're going to type in equals client list. And what do we get? A nifty drop down of all our clients directly in the cell. Repeat the process for the project column using project list in the source. This keeps everything ship shape. No misspellings or oops moment here. Okay, we are almost done. For hours worked, we are going to make sure nobody claims they worked a hundred hours in a day. So click on the hours worked column, pop open the data validation and choose all numbers. We have the minimum set to zero because you can't work less than no hours and the maximum set to 24 because that's all the hours in one day. It's a simple step that keeps our record straight. Last step, let's keep our data safe from accidental slip ups. So go to the review tab and click on protect sheets. Here, you can choose what people can and can't do. Maybe you want them to be able to select cells, but not format them. Once you've checked the options you want, you can set a password. Now only people with a password can make changes to the structure of this sheet. Ready for some magic? It's time to give our data task a superpower called VBA, short for Visual Basic for Applications. This nifty tool in Excel lets us automate almost everything we do manually. Imagine clicking on a single button and poof, data from different sheets swoop into one place, neatly organized. That's what we are aiming for, making our data work smarter, not harder. First thing first, every employee needs their own space, right? Just like separate lockers in a gym. In our Excel workbook, we will set up individual sheets for each employee. Here is how to do it. Click on the little icon at the bottom here. This adds a new blank sheet. We're going to have the employee's name typed in here. So the first employee we have on our list is Alice Johnson. So I will double click on that and type Alice Johnson. This helps us keep track of whose data is on which sheet. Make sure each sheet is like a clone of the others. Same layout, same headers. This way, when we gather data, it's like bringing it all into one big room without any mix-ups. So copy the headers from the first sheets we set up, the employee tracking sheet, and have that pasted on the first row of each new sheet. Do this for every employee in your company so everyone has their own space for data. Next, we need to get to a special part of our Excel where we can talk to VBA. It's called Developer tab. It's not always visible, so you might need to turn it on. To do that, go to File menu. It's at the top left of Excel. Click on Options. You will see a new window pop up. Customize ribbon. This is on the left side of the Options window. You will see it on the right side. Make sure there's a tick in the box next to Developer. This makes the Developer tab show up in your Excel ribbon. Now, we are ready to start using VBA. Here's how to open the VBA editor. Click the developer tab. Find and click Visual Basic. This opens the VBA editor. You can also press Alt and F11 on your keyboard as a shortcut. This is where we can write our magic spells or codes that make Excel do what we want automatically. Now that we are in the VBA editor, we need the space to write our code. Here's how to insert a new model. 
right click anywhere in the left hand panel where you see VBA project and your workbook's name. Choose insert from the context menu that appears, then select model. This adds a new model to your project. It's like adding a blank page to your notebook where you can write your code. Now, it's time to write some code that will do the heavy lifting for us. In the new model you just added, you will see a blank space where you can type. Paste the code for the macro here. This is a set of instructions telling Excel to gather data from all the individual sheets and put it together into one main sheet called master. Don't worry, if you're not sure what to type, I'm going to make this sample code available for your use. This code checks each sheet and if it's not the master sheet, which is our employee tracking, it takes the data from each of the sheets and have that added to the master sheet, the employee tracking sheet. Let's make sure it's easy for anyone to run a macro with a button. So back in Excel, choose the sheet for one of your employees. Go to the developer tab, click insert, then under form controls, click button. Drop the button on the sheet. When you release the mouse, a window pops up. Assign the consolidate data macro to this button and we're going to have this renamed to submit data. Make that bold and there you have it. I'm going to move this to the side away from the space to type in the data. Almost done. Now, we need to make sure everything works. Save your workbook as an Excel macro enabled workbook. So make sure the macros are saved together with it. I will go ahead and add the sample entry data in each employee sheet and format each sheet to make it look a bit beautiful. I will do the same for the other employee sheets. I now have sample data entries in all the employee sheets together with the submit button. I've also gone ahead to do some formatting to make it all look beautiful. Right now, our master sheet is a blank slate. There's not a single entry in sight, just as you can see here. Let's put it to the test. We will click on the submit button located on each employee's individual sheet to see if the information compiles neatly onto our master sheet as intended. After clicking submit button, keep an eye out for a confirmation message that pops up. This little alert is our green light. It tells us that the consolidation has worked like a charm and all the data has now been successfully gathered onto the master sheet. These are the details for Alice Johnson. I will go ahead and click on the submit button on the under employee sheets to have all the data gathered. So we have everything listed here. We have Alice Johnson, Bob Lee, Carol Taylor, and the rest of them. Their details neatly arranged on the master sheet. Let's break down the VBA code. This macro is like a digital assistant helping each employee send their work records to a central master sheet for the manager to review. The macro starts by figuring out where to place the data in the master sheet without disturbing the precious headers. It looks for the last field row and plans to tuck in the new data snugly right underneath. Here, it's like saying, hey Excel, 
go to the very last row of the master sheet and scoot back up to find where the data ends. That's where we will start our pasting. We've put in a safety check to ensure that if the headers are the only thing on the master sheet, we don't overwrite them. It's as if we are telling Excel, if you find the master sheet empty, go ahead and start at the top. But if you see that row 1 has our headers, let's begin on row 2. Next up, the macro checks the employee sheets to see how much data there is to submit. It's looking for the last row filled with the data so it knows exactly what to grab. Think of it as highlighting all the important notes to hand over to the manager. With the areas identified, it's time to do the actual copying and pasting. Our macro is careful to copy only the data and not any formatting, so the master sheet stays nice and clean. This bit of code is like a meticulous office assistant who ensures only the relevant work logs are submitted and nothing else. If an employee hasn't logged any data, the macro is polite enough to let them know with a friendly message. No new data to submit. Once the data is safely submitted, the macro celebrates with a message of success and clears its clipboard because we like to keep our workspace tidy. Now, for those who are comfortable with a bit more coding, you can make your macro also send an email. You will just have to modify this macro to create an email and attach the master sheet. These steps involves using more advanced VBA features that interact with your email clients, like Microsoft Outlook. You might need additional setup or permissions to send emails from Excel, depending on your organization's security settings. Let me know in the comment section if you want a code for that. Now, we would create a daily summary sheet in Excel. This will help us quickly see the total hours worked each day, along with a detailed breakdown by project and client. Let's get started. First, we would create a new sheet specifically for our daily summaries. So go ahead and click the new sheet icon at the bottom of the window. Let's rename this sheet to daily summary. Great. Now, we need to bring in the data from our raw data sheets, which is the employee tracking sheet. This is where a pivot table comes into play, which is perfect for summarizing and organizing our data efficiently. Here's what you do. First, make sure you're on your raw data sheet that contains all the data entries. Then, Go to the Insert tab at the top of Excel. You will find the Pivot Table button. Click on that. When the Pivot Table dialog box opens, it asks where you want the new Pivot Table to be placed. Select Place Pivot Table in Existing Sheet and then select the cell on your Daily Summary Sheet where you want it to start. Click OK and you'll see a blank pivot table appear on your daily summary sheet. Let's set up a pivot table to show the data just how we need it. You should see a list of your fields on the right side in the pivot table field list. Drag the date field and drop it in the row area. This will list all the dates. Next, drag employee name, client and project into the rows area right below date. This creates a hierarchy view, which means you will see the date and under each date, you will see which employees worked on what projects and for which clients. Finally, drag hours worked to the values area. Make sure it's set to sum as this will add up all the hours for us automatically. You can adjust the styles and colors of the pivot table by going to the pivot table tools design tab that appears when you click on the pivot table. Play around with the layout and design options to make the data clear and appealing. You want to be able to see at a glance what's going on in each day. For instance, on this particular date, you have a summary of employees that work for various clients on different projects. Now. We will create a new sheet in our workbook named Monthly Overview. This sheet will aggregate the dates 
from the daily summary to show monthly totals, which is useful for longer term planning and tracking. Again, pivot tables come in handy for this kind of summarization. So select your daily summary data or directly from the raw data if you prefer a direct connection. Insert a pivot table into the monthly overview sheet. Drag dates into the rows area. And also drag employee name, client and project into the rows area to further segment the data. Drag hours worked into the values area to sum up the hours. Now that our pivot table is set up on the monthly overview sheet, let's customize it to suit our specific reporting needs and prepare it for integration with the dashboard we plan to build. Here is how. To begin, we will add filters to our pivot table. This is crucial because it allows us to focus on specific information such as data for a particular employee, client, or project. So simply drag the employee name, client and project fields to the filters area of the pivot table. This will enable us to filter the entire table based on these fields, making our data exploration as specific or broad as we need. Next, let's make certain data points stand out using conditional formatting. This feature is particularly useful for quickly identifying outliers or critical issues such as projects where the hours worked exceed expected thresholds. So select the total hours column, go to the home tab. On the home tab, click on conditional formatting, choose highlight cells rows and set parameters that suit your needs. For instance, highlighting any values greater than 40 hours in a week. Although we are building a dashboard, adding slicers directly to our pivot tables can significantly enhance the interactivity of our data sheets. So go to the pivot table analyze tab, select insert slicer and choose the relevant fields such as dates, clients or project. You can also have this formatted using any of the options here. Some of the grid lines just to make it really look like a report. Ensure that your pivot tables are regularly updated with new data entries from the raw data sheet. To do that, simply right click on the pivot table and select refresh to load new entries. We are now going to set up the monthly agreement sheets in our Excel workbook. This essential component allows us to compare the hours we agreed to with each client against the actual hours worked by her team. Let's get started. Click on the plus icon to add a new sheet. Have the new sheet renamed to monthly agreement. We will set up the necessary columns. In cell H1, type client. In B1 project, in C1 month, in D1 agreed hours, and in E1 actual hours. These columns will help us organize and compare key data. Now, let's fill in our agreement details with sample data. In column A and B, I've listed the names of clients and corresponding projects. These are all just samples. Input the months of the agreement. Let's use January 2023 for consistency. For agreed hours in column D, you're going to input the hours you have committed with the client. Leave actual hours in column A blank for now. We will use formulas to fill that in. To compare the agreed hours with the actual hours, we need to set up a system to fetch and display this data. In our monthly overview sheets, we would create a unique identifier by combining the client, project, and month into a single string in a new column. Let's first change the report layout of the pivot table 
to a tabular form. Click on the cell in the pivot table. You will see the design tab showing. Click on that. Locate the report layout group of commands. Click on that and a drop down menu will appear. From the drop down menu, select show in tabular form. Click yes and that would change the layout for us. Have a new column inserted. We would name that unique identifier and use these formulas to concatenate your dates, client and project values. To copy this formula down the column and apply it to all entries, we need to first ensure that our pivot table is not displaying any subtotals or grand totals as this will interfere when copying formulas. To disable subtotals, click on any cell within your pivot table to activate the pivot table tools on the ribbon. Go again to the design tab in the layout group, click on subtotals and choose do not show subtotals. Still under the design tab in the layout group, click on grand totals and choose off for rows and columns. We can now have this copied down for the other cells. In the actual hours column of the monthly agreement, we will fetch the actual hours from the monthly overview sheets using a index formula. I will write the index formula we are going to use in H2. This formula is supposed to look for the unique identifier in the monthly overview sheet and retrieve the corresponding hours worked in a monthly agreement sheet. Let's see how that works. It's just as we want it. So we've been able to get 14 hours actual worked for this client and this particular project. So drag this formula down to fill the column. To easily spot where we exceed our agreed hours, Apply conditional formatting to the actual hours column. So select this column, then go to the home tab, click on conditional formatting and create a new row. We're going to be using the formula for this. So go with the option, use the formula to determine which cells to format and use the formula like this. Choose the format such as a red fill to highlight any cells where the actual hours surpass their grid hours and click OK. And we can easily tell from a glance that the hours on these rows exceed the agreed hours with the clients. Creating a dashboard in Excel is an excellent way to visually display key metrics and make data-driven decisions more effectively. Here's how you can build a dashboard based on the information from our daily summary and monthly overview sheets. Let's begin by laying the groundwork for our data analysis. Please follow along as we create the foundation of a dashboard. Start by clicking on the plus sign at the bottom to add a new sheet. This is going to be a data engine room. Double click the new tab and have that named to pivot table data. This is where we will house our pivot tables. First up, we need to identify the metrics that will best reflect our team's efforts and achievements. Total hours worked in the month. This matrix helps us gauge the overall effort exerted over the month. Average hours worked per client provides insights into the workload and effort distribution across different projects. Total hours worked for each client shows which clients are keeping our team the busiest. A number of projects handled by employee reveals the capacity and diversity of tasks each team member is managing. Now, let's organize our raw data into actionable insights. This sheet, like I said, will serve as the foundation where our data is transformed. I will create a pivot table for hours worked. Click on an empty cell like A1 to start fresh. Select pivot table from the insert tab and use monthly overview as the data source. Drag the date field into the filters area to select the specific month for analysis. Place employee name in the rows to list team members individually. Add hours worked to the values to automatically sum up the hours 
and include clients under employee name in roles. So view hours by clients for each employee. Visualizing data helps in quicker and clearer understanding. So we will be using a pie chart for this visualization. Click within the pivot table, navigate to the insert tab and pick pie or donut chart. I will go with donut chart. These charts will now beautifully represent how work hours are distributed among clients. I would want a separate sheet for a dashboard to make things neat. So I will create another sheet, name that dashboard and do some formatting to this sheet to have the dashboard ready for our visualization. I have done some formatting to my dashboard. Let's now have the pie charts move to the dashboard by simply copying and pasting. And we can then format this further to match with the theme of the dashboard. So with this, you can filter based on the employee name and the client. So remove the blank. Let's uncheck the box for the blank. You can also click on this to expand the entire field, but it looks neater when you have it collapsed like this. You can also change the design of the chart by clicking on the design tab and go with your preference. I kind of like this one. So I will go with that and then have that formatted to suit the theme. I will get this out of the way of my chart by hiding it. Let's give our chart a title by inserting a text box. We'll give it a title, Hours Distribution, and have it formatted to suit the theme of the chart.
diving deeper with comparisons, let's set up another pivot table from the same data. This time, drag projects to the rows and hours worked to values. Highlight the new pivot tables data. Choose bar or column charts from insert tab. These charts will compare the hours across different projects visually. Let's move this to our dashboard and have it formatted just like the first chart. Remove the blank. We can actually have these fields hidden since we're going to be creating slicers. This would help us have more space. To further enrich our dashboard, we are going to create a stack bar chart for employee project distribution. So let's set up a pivot table for that using the same data source. We would have our employee name in rows and project in columns so drag project to the values area from this table i will create a stacked column chart to visualize individual contributions to various projects then create another pivot table to visualize project hours by client So this time we would have our clients in rows and projects in columns. We will use a line chart to visualize this. So let's move the two created charts to our dashboard for further formatting. Have the blanks removed. And hide this field as we don't need it.
we will give this the title employee project distribution we will now go ahead to have the line charts formatted Again, have the blanks removed and have these fields hidden. I think I would like to go with a different design just to make the charts more beautiful and detailed. So let's remove the fill and remove the outline. I would also get rid of the grid lines. I will change the data label shape to this and have a different fill for each client. Give this a title so project hours by clients. Let's now create and set up slicers to enhance interactivity. So going back to the pivot table data sheets, select any of the pivot tables that has the information you need. On that pivot table analyze tab, click on insert slicer and choose fields like client, project, and employee name. Click OK and the slicers will appear on your sheet. Select all the slicers to cut it and paste to the dashboard sheet. Arrange the slicers and format them without blocking any data views. We need to connect the slicers to all the pivot tables so we can have it control the charts. As it is now, the slicer is only controlling one of the charts, which is this one. It's not controlling the rest. So right click on the slicer, select report connections and tick the pivot tables that you want the slicer to control. I would have 
everything ticked. Repeat the process for the next two slices. Now we have the slicer filtering all the charts. Ensure your dashboard data is always current by refreshing the pivot tables and charts when the underlying data is updated. And that's a wrap. With our dashboard now set up, you have a powerful tool at your disposal to monitor and manage employee hours and client projects efficiently. And that concludes our tutorial. Thank you for joining me today. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for more tutorials like this. Happy tracking.